Hey everyone, it's Tlor, and today I want to talk to you about press fit tolerances. Now this is something that can be helpful in 3D printing, laser cutting, any of those sorts of things, as well as even just cutting with hand tools or power tools. So I'm going to start this demonstration with a piece like this one, and I'm going to show you real close how it's got square corners, okay? So there might be a little bit of a rounding there, but it's it's basically a square corner. And we'll compare that to this one right here, where you can see it's got a little bit of a wedge corner to it. So that's to help guide the piece into position as we put it together. Now, this slot right here is a slightly different size than the piece. You can see it doesn't really slide in, and that's intentional. So that's part of a press fit tolerance is making it so that these pieces don't necessarily just slide together. We want them to stay together after we put it together. So that wedge helps guide it in because right now you can put this piece together, but there's always going to be a corner out. And so it's not going to want to seat properly. When you press it, it's going to press together at an angle. And that's not very helpful. So this makes sure that there's at least one corner from each end in there, and it'll go in a lot smoother. The second piece to this is when you look at a piece of acrylic like this, there's actually differences in thickness. So if I compare these two pieces right here, you can kind of see, and it's a very small difference on this one, that there's actually a little bit of a difference in thickness between the two of these. So if I make this slot a specific width, from this direction, there's going to be pieces that will fit in and there's going to be pieces that won't. So we want to make sure that this slot is close. We call it a running tolerance so that you could, in theory, just slide a piece right through. See, I can slide this through this way because it's narrower than the length of the slot. So that is making it so that we can ignore the material thickness when we're putting this together. So no matter how thick the material is, as long as it's within range of that slot, it'll fit in the slot. So now all that we're doing is we're connecting it using the, the length of this right here. So this slot at length and the spacing between these two cuts right here is set so that that's what's holding the piece in place. So now even if my material changes a little bit in thickness, it's not going to have any problems after it's cut fitting into this slot. Now, we'll compare that slot to this one right here. This is again that running tolerance, and you can see this just slides right on there. It's loose, you can see I can move it around a little bit without taking it off, but it's not a tight tolerance that we have to try and force this through. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna take these pieces together, and I'm, you can just barely seat it in there, again with the, that wedge corner. And they're, they're in there, barely. They're, they're a little bit loose, and that's okay. These are just press fit in with my hand a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this watch face press, which is just a little um, lever arm, essentially. So I can grab this and squeeze it, and it's going to press in place. Now, normally it comes with these white pads that have a big hole in the middle, and I don't really need that. So I just made a piece that just lightly snaps over the top of it. And now I can press this on there. So I'm going to put it on this pad. And it's definitely going to be hard to see from this angle. But you can hear it. And that is actually just how tight the acrylic is squeezing together. So I'm going back and forth from the front to the back a little bit. You can see my hand movement here. But I'm really just pressing it a little bit. We don't want to press too hard because eventually it's, it's together. So now these pieces are together. And they're not going to just come apart. So you would have to push pretty hard in this slot to get those to pop back out. And we have a, a spin on this piece here that it holds its place, but you can easily move it to another location. So if I wanted this to say instead of 13, I can rotate it to 10. And so now this is able to keep score, and there's no glue involved. You saw how quickly it was to put those pieces together, and now this is a great way to have a counter. So these pieces go all the way through, and they're tolerance based on the length of the slot rather than on the width. And you're going to have to do a little bit of trial and error. There were a whole bunch of these I went through to get the fit just right. But adding that wedge in there to help locate it before you push it together will really help. Now, we ran into some of that tolerance as well on these teeth combs. 
So you can actually see that these are not straight up and down. They are a little bit of an angle. So we are trying to fit a cardboard token in here and they're going to vary in size and the more that you use them, the more thin that they're going to get. So if I push this in just a little bit, you can actually just barely see that there is a little bit of a slot at the bottom of this where it's not pushed in all the way. That's because we have a straight front and a, about a five degree angle back. And the thickness, the average thickness is in the middle of that slot. So if we take a piece that's slightly thinner, it'll sit a little bit higher up. And as it wears, or if you get thinner pieces, thicker pieces, um, thinner pieces, they'll slowly go down further all the way to the bottom. And that lets you kind of set your own press fit. And now this piece isn't going to fall out. And we did that similarly on all the front ones. They're actually just slightly different so that they'll stay in there, but they're a little bit easier to pull in and out. Now, when I say slightly different, what's the difference between these? Well, it's 0.005 inches. So these four slots in the front are just slightly wider than this one in the back. These pieces, you want to stay in there a lot easier. And since we're going to be removing the ones that are up here more often, we're going to leave that a little bit of a looser tolerance. And that you'll be able to feel that. Just try and cut some pieces and put in a 005 difference and you'll feel a difference in how things slide together and move together. Now, how this tolerance is set up is all of these pieces are cut from the same piece. So this circle is actually just a laser cut, laser beam thickness. So you can see there's a little bit of side to side play, but it's okay because it still rotates really easily and we're able to to use these teeth combs that are pushing down, they're actually holding it in place. So they're pushing down on this material to kind of give it a little bit of a friction and stay in place. So that's how that one works. So what's another thing that you can look for? Well, I want to show you these two different counters right here. And you'll notice there's one big difference between them in this window down at the bottom. This one has multiple layers that are on there. And this dark green layer is this one that you can see kind of on top and is the dials that are right here. And then on this one, you'll notice that it has different color layers and there's a white layer that's on top, but the dials are a different blue. So what's the difference? This one, I can spin the dials. No problem. Whereas on this one, I cannot. They spin really hard. So what happened? If you get really close to this, and I'm gonna try and get really close to this, you can actually almost see how it bowed. So this wood that's on top is bowing because we clamped it to this white acrylic that's thinner than this blue one. And it doesn't have to be much at all because now it, this is bowing and pressing onto these and they're very, very hard to turn. Whereas by cutting these out of the same piece of acrylic at the same time, this material is the same thickness all the way across. So there's no bow to this piece, and so there's no additional force on it. And these are able to spin freely. So that's kind of a way that you can use tolerance on a simpler method, is you have to watch the thickness changes when you do that. So how to fix this, make sure these dials are made out of the same sheet of acrylic and then you won't have to account for the tolerance. The thickness won't come into play. What's another way that we can use this to our advantage? Well, if we look at um, some of these counters that I put together, we have this hole in the middle that's for a magnet. And based on how we size that hole is going to change how it fits together. So if we take one of these counters right here, it has magnets that are press fit in there. There's no glue used in these at all. And this magnet slides all the way through and then it sticks out just a little bit. I'll get to that in a second. And then this one is a thinner magnet and so you can see uh, it does not protrude on either side. So this one, because the magnet is slightly thicker than the material, it sticks out a little bit. So we're able to use that, and that actually makes it so that this doesn't move around a whole lot. You can hear that click. That's how much it's moving around. It's very, very little. And so we use that to locate, and it turns into a free-spinning piece. Now, if I were to take this magnet, 
and I'm going to put it in my press because that's how I do these. And I push it through. So now you can't really see it because it's just barely um, inside of it. But now this magnet is below the surface. And the difference that that makes is it doesn't take any effort at all for me to just slide this off. So it causes some misalignment as you're trying to shift it and it'll just slide off. So using the tolerances in the, the other direction means that now I can push this magnet in there and it's going to allow it to locate. So how does that work? Well, these are three millimeter pieces of acrylic and this is eighth inch thick magnet. So it's actually like 0.2 millimeters thicker. And then also when we cut these holes, uh, this is also going to be really hard to see, but if you can, you can actually see that when a laser cuts, it does not cut square. So it's not going to cut a square shape. It's actually going to be more like a wedge. And so when you look at the profile of something like this, uh, you can see that these are not lining up right on the edge. And that's because on one side, it's going to be slightly narrower than on the other. So we're talking like a degree or two and that's because a laser beam actually focuses at like a central point but then is actually wedged and crosses just due to how the lens works so we use that to our advantage on this piece because that means that this hole is actually going to be slightly larger on one side than on the other so if I were to try and put this together against the magnet uh, there's actually it's not going to locate and not going to sit in the right place I know the magnet's pressing it apart, but because that hole is the same size, it's not going to fit. So I put it together in the way that the magnet, the hole lines up on the magnet, and now it's able to spin freely over that. So that's just kind of a summary of how you can use some of the th thickness changes and tolerances to get things to either press together to go without glue, or you can use it to help keep your pieces working over the lifespan. So something like this cardboard piece as it wears out is still going to fit in this slot just because of how it's angled and can and change over the life.